my last podcast for today or better to say it's already for the next day <laughs> so i have always some content additional i'm just waiting for my guest as soon she comes up okay there she is give us and then we can start There she is. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Hope everything is good. Very well, thank you so much. Perfect. You're welcome. I appreciate you a lot for uh, hopping on the podcast today. Finally, we can make it happen. I think we'll have a great time together. And yeah, we'll just say we can start. Tell people who you are and a little bit about your background. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Shana X Lee on social media, or Shana O Lee on some social media. Um, and I'm based in the beautiful Gold Coast of Queensland, Australia. Um, my background was um, I came out of school and became a chef, and um, I spent some time winning some awards and competitions, um, and quickly realised it was a really daunting, a uh, really daunting role, and it was quite easy to lose the magic of what I loved by doing it day in day out. And yeah. so I left and I chased money, and I had boyfriends, and life did all these fun things for me. And um, I ended up winding my way to Queensland, so from South Australia, the bottom of Australia, up to Queensland and driving dump trucks in the mine. And um, I've driven, like in Australia, I've driven everything from the tiniest little triple seven trucks all out to the biggest lee bed. And I learned so much about myself in that process. I learned so much about the health industry, about uh, the male-dominated industry, so chefing, male-dominated, uh, mining, definitely male-dominated. And I spent a lot of time realising that there was so much pain in the world um, yeah. and also that men can be just as bitchy as women can be. And then That's I quit that. Yeah, yeah. And so then I, I got into um, personal training. So um, I myself um, struggled with many eating disorders throughout my younger years. Um, you can't quite tell here, but I am what you would call an Amazonian woman. So I'm, I'm six foot one and a half, um, and I and I am well and truly uh, robustly built. And I got very mentally ill because of society's dictations, because of my own beliefs, my own traumas, all the things, right? And then became a personal trainer, and I thought, this is it. Now I'm going to fix the world. And obviously, in the personal trainer industry, it's very common for personal trainers to go out and try doing bodybuilding. So I got yeah. up and I, I trained for it. I hired myself a coach. I did all the right things. I had dietitians. And it was all so strenuous and ridiculous. And I could not. Look, I got on stage and, and leading up to it, I remember my coach saying, you're doing it wrong. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do. And I remember being so broken because I was like, I'm doing everything I think I like, everything you tell me I do. Um, and I told you the small little slip ups I had. And so I was like, but what's wrong with me, right? What's wrong with me? So I got on stage and didn't win, didn't place, because I have a very different, this is what I now know, I have a very different body to most of the girls, to 95% of the girls that do bodybuilding. I have a different physique. Yeah. Is it achievable? Yes. Was it achievable in the way and the, with the tools and the construct that these coaches and dietitians had? No. So then I started to learn, uh, I had a friend of mine say to me, Chana, I see that you've had the pain of this experience. What if I could tell you there was more science, more knowledge and more to this? Would you want to know the truth about our biology and how that played out in your situation? And so naturally I was like, of course, I'm there. So I went and I did the weekend course and, um, and learned about biology, learned about um, humans and their, their, their truth, their biological foundation and where the entire health, wellness and fitness industry is set out for only one third of the population, if that. Yeah. What's going on with the other two thirds of the population in the entire world, right? Yeah. What is really going on? Like there is so much depression, so much dis-ease in the world. What, how? Because they have this narrow-minded set of rules and structures and, and, and beliefs and, and, and um, platforms, yeah. and it's actually neglecting two-thirds of the world, and I was one of them. So mm -hmm. it's a lack of knowledge, a lack of awareness, and I believe yeah. a lack of letting go of what we know 
and being open to the possibility that there's actually more truth out there for us. Yeah. Um, and that's led me down a beautiful road to where I am now, where I'm actually 33, about to turn 34, and I would class myself as semi-retired, um, living in a beautiful space in the Gold Coast and just really passionate, no longer selling, no longer working, but um, I'm really still here in a space where I'm wanting to make a great impact in the world. And as my beautiful partner would say, it's we make an impact in the world by living our truth. We make yeah. an impact in the world right now by living it day by day in balance, in presence, and in flow. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely uh, a very what, interesting yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very, very interesting. You said something very important, and I think that's so common in the fitness and bodybuilding industry. And actually, tomorrow I have really a legendary talk about bodybuilding with somebody. I think many people who love bodybuilding um, want to watch that, and I can definitely talk about the things I do with you today with him tomorrow because he's also very open but he's the son of rec park and rec mm -hmm. park was with steve reeves they were the first big bodybuilders before arnold they were also arnold's idols so for everybody who watched maybe the the first Her hercules movies that was his yeah. dad and and wow. uh, john john park the son he was also an olympic swimmer in, in 76 he was competing in the olympics he also has a great physique And he has that knowledge, obviously, from his legendary dad. So I think very interesting for people to really see how to train um, everybody. Because I think the true coach or the best coaches, they can train everybody. Because you already said it yourself now, and I see that um, very common in the fitness industry. I have a few um, ladies who are also quite tall for bodybuilding. I mean, when you're 5, 10, 5, 11, that's for compared to the other girls, definitely sometimes too too tall. And it's not impossible, but one thing is, and for the male, it's for, for the you know male competitors, it's different, but for female, even harder, because the longer you are, the harder it is to pack on muscles for the look. And that mm -hmm. is why sometimes I had some friends also, they were always comparing themselves with these other fitness, like fitness chicks, that's what they you know, say to these, you know, yeah. wannabe Instagram influencers because they see them always on these fitness expos. And in Germany, we have the biggest fitness expo in Europe. Even American people show up and from all over the world. And then I always told them, but look, they are just 5'3", five, 5'2", five, maybe even five foot, and you are 5'10". Mm -hmm. Of course, you look different. Your butt basically will look, you know, longer and taller than them because they're short and stuck in very often. They have a mix between fat and muscles. And then they do all these poses, you know, and then have these what I call obelix pants, you know, um, the comic asterisk and obelix. And he always had these pants up to his, you know, <laughs> almost to his chest. And then you can hide and cover a lot. And so for them, it's definitely harder and it takes more years to get to that level where it's from the look matching with the height. And I think with you it was the same. And I also think a great coach can teach everybody or can train everybody, whether it's in martial arts, uh, bodybuilding, soccer, basketball, whatever. And I think um, many people are not really open, as you said. They just have a lot well, of... I think, the conception is, I think what we now know is that um, it's not... See, what I, what I enjoy witnessing is that there are a lot of um, vegan... Um, bodybuilders yep. coming out there. Now, I don't, I don't condone veganism. Why? Because yep. protein isn't the problem. Put up yep. your hand and have a look at your thumb, and that's about the portion of protein you want to be having in a meal. Like, yep, and true. how much do we mass consumption? The mass consumption is the problem. Vegan, like the requirement for veganism is not because certain bodies actually require their biology completely requires protein, animal protein. But then some like mine, I have a bigger body. I actually have a longer digestive tract. So I actually yeah. can take plant matter. It takes longer to go through my digestive tract. Therefore, my body is able, if it's healthy, balanced, and not sitting in too much stress, I can extrapolate a lot more nutrients from plant yeah. matter than most other bodies. So yeah. am I saying I'm vegan? The only time I do vegan is under strict protocol for a 12 to 14 day reset or detox protocol using specific mm -hmm. plant matter at specific yeah. times to enable my body to fully drop. And I can safely drop a lot of weight in, a very, in, in two weeks. Safely, keeping my hormones balanced, my mind balanced, 
and enabling my body to completely reset. So it's not the protein that's the, the problem. It's actually the meal frequency, the time of yeah. day at which you do everything, everything. Mm-hmm. If you want like a, a 20% for an 80% result rule, uh, it's your biology that's the key. Are you a morning trainer or actually should you be training yeah, yeah. in the afternoon? Should you be eating one meal per day, three meals per day, or five meals per day? Should you, like, every single human is so unique. And if you're going to a trainer who's giving you the same program as every yeah. other one of his people, you're mm-hmm. not getting a personalized approach. And this is the problem with the health and wellness yeah, that, industry. That, that's, that's the biggest problem in, in bodybuilding fitness scene. They put out these programs, like the general programs. And I'm sure there is certain tips, exercises everybody can do. But the mm-hmm. best coaching is always when it's an individual thing. And I can mm-hmm. give an example to that. When we had peak time in our gym, in, in our martial arts gym, we always had, back then when I did martial arts as a kid, 40 people on the mats. And it's mm-hmm. just a lot. And it, it, the coach is not to blame, absolutely not, because my coach, and even there were two coaches, um, you cannot look after everybody five minutes. So he was looking at everybody but not for five minutes or so, just quick, okay, keep your hands up, move more to the right, move more to the left. So mm. one thing I thought is always, when, as soon as I started doing personal training with certain coaches, with certain people, watched videos or whatever, then I improved the most. Because I would say for myself, maybe I'm not the most talented, but I definitely know my work ethic definitely kills everybody. And that's the thing, I always had an advantage towards other people. I think with bodybuilding specifically, work ethic also can help a lot on sports in general and that's why individual training and plans is always the best a million percent and i mean that's the other component of it is that um <clears throat> some people are trying to design to train every day and that's fine my yeah. body is actually better designed for pha training three to four days per week and actually if i do some yoga training in between that and i know in the body bodybuilding industry yoga is like this like so bad yeah but that's once true. you get out of your ego and you actually realize your body has tendons and ligaments and support mechanisms that require yeah. strength at the same time, There's, each body has a different balance. Some people need the 5x5 five five training, my body. Some people need a, a 3RM rack, like max. That works brilliant for the big, stocky, heavy endomorph. But most people yeah. in the fitness industry, and I can go through the rest of them, but in the fitness industry, they believe there's three, um, three somatotypes, the endomorph, the mandomorph, and the ectomorph. Yeah. But there's also the between. Six. Yeah. yeah. So there's six. There's the meso, the meso ecto, the, oh, sorry, exactly, the, yeah. the meso, Me- the meso yeah. endo, endo, the endo, yeah. the endo meso, uh, yeah. the, and all the whole way around. So there's hybrids of both of them. And exactly, this yeah. is you fit somewhere on that spectrum. And when you understand where that is, and then you put in your environment. So if you're training five days a week, waking up and going to work too early in the morning, coming home to a messy, stressed, chaotic home life, and then going to go and train? What are you expecting? But my other thing for the fitness industry is, is it maintainable? Are these bodybuilders who have spent their whole life training or half of their life dedicated to their training, is it maintainable? When they get old, what's their body actually going to be like? What's their hormones going to be like? It's not sustainable. Yeah. And the problem is, is because most of them are doing it, in the format of this template that everybody says you should do, which is the same same for everybody, when it's not, you should be doing specifics for your body type in balance and in flow and having adequate time off, having uh, seasonal training so that your body and your hormones have time to adapt. I now don't do bodybuilding and I don't ever want to do it again, but I really appreciated doing it because as someone who had a, um, uh, had multiple uh, eating disorders, what I came to realize is that the health and fitness industry has a beautiful facade to mask, support, and nurture mental illness. It's yes. not actually there to fix and help people. Why? Because the supplements, the um, drug companies are a multi-billion dollar industry. Why do they want you to be better? Why do they want you to actually be happy and successful? And the life you're living, is it sustainable? Is it truly you living out your greatest expression? Are yeah. you truly living out your greatest embodiment of your biology? Mm-hmm. I think there's so many details to that. I mean, definitely you can train for the rest of your life and you can definitely look very 
uh, long in, in your life good and be in shape. I mean, I know many people who are over 60 and over 70 who are like in perfect shape and just from the body you think they're 30. Um, but I think it's up to a lot of details. And I always um, have the thought and I talk to many great coaches when you really want to live the true healthy lifestyle, there's two things you have to do if, if it's really your passion. Either you completely change your lifestyle. That means if, let's say, you shift worker, you have to cancel your job because, and it's not just for the bodybuilding or workout, but in general, because sleep is crucial. Normally, people say you have to sleep early before midnight, even maybe at 9 p.m., but I know with many people it's not possible because their lifestyle because we're in a society where it's really the big circle that we have to be unhealthy. That's how the pharma industry and all whatever is um, you know, created in the world, that's how they want us to be. And the only people who are really healthy um, within all the details are people who are maybe rich and can afford all that. Or um, you know, when, you, when you really have organic food, your garden, whatever you want, if you really look in all the details like sleep, perfect, everything on time, or you just create your own lifestyle like that. Yeah, you create your own lifestyle. I think the biggest word is balance. Yeah. Amongst everything. Balance and presence. If you don't have presence in your life, if you don't have balance, um, I'm someone, if you watch my social media and Facebook, we do have a bunch. Uh, our social life is incredible, but we still go to yoga five days a week. I still train in the gym two to three days a week. We have a beautifully abundant, balanced life because we stepped away from everything that was dictated to us in the mainstream and we went, that's not working for me. Let me go create something that feels fully in flow. Let's go create something where we get to be present in our life because that is when you truly can celebrate. And that presence, standing on the beach, doing yoga, costs minimal. Eating the right food, that would be a choice if you are living a balanced present sure. life. If you are not living a balanced present life, you are living someone else's. You are living in social media land where you're comparing yourself to everybody else. What if and that's what people do, yeah. Yeah. So what if me here at Arm Habit Shed, what if me at eighty six kilos, a six foot one and a half, what if this is actually my healthiest expression? What if me without having bulging arm muscles and what if me being this beautiful Amazonian human, what if this is my healthy expression. I do have a bit of a belly because that's feminine. That's me with my natural hormones, my feminine voluptuousness. But in the health and fitness industry, they would say you've got a good couple of kilos to lose. And I have my moments where I go back into that psychology myself. But my body is at its most happiest. My cortisol levels are at their lowest. My well, your weight definitely for your height, definitely it's a normal weight. So that's what people need to understand. Because, you know, when somebody is... Um, six feet one six feet one and a half that's like one um 85 one meter 86 so that's like the perfect you know weight for that of course being overweight is definitely nobody can say it's good in whatever lifestyle they have or whatever they create in their in their brain but because when you're overweight healthy wise it's definitely not good even if you maybe say you're happy or whatever but healthy wise it's definitely not good but I mean, your shape your BMI. is BMI. BMI tests have now been made obsolete. BMI actually does not work because for someone of an endomorphic body frame, a BMI is ridiculous because I have a lot well, more. Definitely doesn't work, yeah. Because as soon as you yeah. just type in, let's say a, a, a man is five eleven and and he weighs two twenty, but it's muscles, the BMI will immediately say you're probably at uh, twenty seven point something, and then it's already overweight. So that's definitely bullshit. Mirror and yeah. and weight check and then that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, and checking with you, how do you feel? Because when I was doing bodybuilding, I was eating nine meals per day and um, and I felt I felt acidic all day. Yeah. I was so I stressed. I'm, you, so, uh, you can be probably happy that you didn't get colitis because some people get colitis from that. Can, can give you an example for that. Um, GSP, George St. Pierre, he was a former double champ in the UFC and for, the, for his second title run, so before he was a welterweight, he's five, uh, ten and a half, and he was before a welterweight um, that was 170 pounds, so 77 kilos, and then he had a four-year layoff, was training all the time and everything, and then he wanted to challenge himself to compete at 185. And he his natural weight was 185, 190, that's when he was competing because the professional martial arts, they always do weight cuts and water weight cuts. So 
that's but that's another thing. But he thought because everybody walks around more than the competing weight. Only the have the heavy weights obviously they have the normal weight, they don't cut weight. So and his opponent Michael Bisping was around walking around two ten to fifteen. And then he mm -hmm. thought he needed to bulk up, put a little size and muscles on it, and he did. But in these six months he gained six kilos. And yep. that and before and because of that he, you know, had then colitis. And mm -hmm. he, he was healing his body with fasting then afterwards. I mean it worked out all perfect. He won the title, was then double champ and everything. But you know, he said in hindsight he regretted he just should have stayed at one eighty five because one eighty five was the competition weight and he walks around one eighty five, one ninety. So it would be so easy for him just, you know, cut a little bit the calories or whatever and then he has the weight. But through that he, you know, developed a colitis and that was definitely a catastrophe for him. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is the thing. You may feel good in that moment or you may be tricking yourself yeah. into having a chemical reaction where you feel good in the moment. But what is the longevity of that? What is the after effect of That's that? I spent yeah. six years attempting to get my hormones to regulate back to some kind of standard of homothetic for my body. Six yeah. years. And, and I know all the tricks. I am one of those fanatical health freaks with my background in in food and fitness and epigenetics, I'm the one that everyone turns to and goes, how do I, how do I live? How do I eat? How do I do the things? I've had, I've had um, a girlfriend went away on a girl's retreat and apparently all five of the girls want me to put together a girl's uh, biological program to help all of them back, get back to homosaity and balance and whatnot and lose weight. Um, there's a lot of psychology in that. What I do, I, I, that's another wormhole for another day, but it's, it's more about understanding that everyone's different and we're all going to have a different experience, but it's your belief and your truth and your, your psychology yeah. that's going to have the greatest effect along with your environment. So mm -hmm. if you're someone who's striving for something, stop doing so much and start being so much. Start being in the person, the presence, the size, the, the lifestyle you want to have. If you're coming home to a toxic home environment or you're going to work to it in a toxic environment, there is nothing you can do physically that's going to out-train that. If you're eating poorly and you're, you're drinking too much, have compassion. If I've been drinking, we've had one of our beautiful, amazing weekends out, I'm not going to train for a couple of days. I'm going to love, I'm going to nurture, I'm going to be in flow, I'm going to find my balance again, empower my body and then step forward. But if you're trying to out-train your shitty life, it will yeah. never work for you. Not that's in the way yeah. that it works. Yeah, no, that's very, that's very important to know for a lot of people because many people put too much pressure on for the wrong reasons. I mean, I'm not saying pressure is not good. I'm a person, you know, I can eat that pressure very easy and there's times where it's important because you cannot be always too lazy and let everything just flow and, you know, do nothing. But I think too many people are not made for that or do the wrong decisions. And sometimes it's not just always the work ethic that's very important, but it's also about the decisions you do. I mean, you do many things, um, Body-mind connection is very important for you. Then the, the retreats and healing and all that. So there's, there's so many things definitely can talk about. But um, let's talk about um, body and mind connection. How important is that for you and just, you know, feeling good and maybe also giving advices for people because I'm sure you give a lot of, especially women out there, some value. Yeah, body-mind connection is everything. Your perception is the gateway to your happiness. So... <clears throat> What I see in this cup and what you see in this cup are very different things. So your perception yeah. is everything. And if your perception is clouded by judgment, if that's clouded by um, trauma, if it's clouded by your parent or society dictation, then mm -hmm. your perception of that cup will, will, will be um, filtered through that. And so the body-to-mind yeah. connection is everything. I spent my whole life until 2000 and. 14 living as if as, as a mesomorph so short fire aggressive challenge I'm going to do all the things i'm going to be skinny i'm going to be the best i'm going to be the fastest mm -hmm. until i realized in 2014-15 i'm an endomorph and i actually have every bit of right to sleep in until 8 a.m yes i said 8 a.m you will not yeah. get me out of bed unless it's a miracle before 8 a.m most of society would say that that's lazy because half yeah. two thirds of society is getting up before that because you've got to eat the worms. Yeah, it's just because more. they have their, their, their bullshit lifestyle, maybe they're forced to 
to do that, yeah. <laughs> and so this was the understanding. I lived my whole life with, I lived, sorry, I lived until two years ago with extreme stress, anxiety, depression, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever, how, whatever, whatever figure you uh, resonate with. But I lived with that my whole life because I was constantly trying to be what I thought I should be to be enough, to be sure. seen, to be heard, to be held. The truth was that none of that was serving because none of it was right for me. I'm a body that needs slow and steady in the morning. Think of me as the Titanic, right? There's a whole third of the population that is the Titanic. It needs to know that the passengers, everything's ready and rock, ready to rock and roll. It needs to know where everything is. It needs to know where it's going. It needs to know what um, food stops it has. It needs to know what water stops it has. It needs to know everything. Then it yeah. starts to take off. Now, a Titanic doesn't just go, boom, and take off. It builds its engine. It builds its capacity. It builds its power. Yeah. It builds its momentum. As it gets its momentum, one or two o'clock in the day, it starts to collect speed. Then once it collects speed, go and eat your lunch, go and train, boom. Now you're soaring at good capacity until late in the afternoon, evening, and you can organise, thought, pack and stack while everybody else has passed out and gone to bed early. You're there as the night owl, striving on strong, and everybody else's brain is vacated. They're ready to cocoon and go to sleep, and you're like, let's do the things. Then there are our mesomorphs, our short, fiery, aggressive people who get up first thing in the morning and those weirdos bounce out of bed and they're like, morning, everything's amazing. And they're bouncing around the house and they're doing all the things and they're chatterboxing and blah, 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 blah. Because they're designed, those are like, if I, let's put it into a frame of, they're the jet skis, right? They are the jet skis and they are zipping here, zipping there. You're going to challenge me? That's great. I'm going to jump to the challenge and I can do it the fastest. I can do it the best. I like things. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm thinking. Like, as I'm describing this, think about your friends and your family and be like, oh, my gosh, that's that person. These are the jet skis that think that life is a challenge, life is a joke, and they will tell you exactly what they're thinking in the moment with no filter and also no emotional connection to what they've just said. Then we have our ectomorphs who are the long Paul people. These are the, the, the those guys out in rowboats. These are the ones that are the, the, the bikes, people ride it, right? Who are those weirdos with bike yeah. rides? They're mostly ectomorphs. They want to know. They've got their gun in there and they're tracking whether they've done the same that they did yesterday and are they having the best calorie output input, blah, yeah. blah, 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 like, technical terms. Like a lot of university nerds or so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So these are the people that are there for the long haul. These are those who are the ones that can just keep going and going and they want to know the data, they want to know the facts, everything needs to be logical, sequential. Um, these guys are the ones that are going to be, I want to I want to get from point A to point B the most fastest and efficient because it makes no logic to do it any other way. And there's bodies that are very lean. So remind you, they also don't have reserve to divert because that could mean biological death. That could mean physiological mindful death. Right. So if we understand that we each fit into, uh, there's more I can do with that. There's more I can break it down into. But basically, that's the way that humans are broken up. But how does society dictate? You all have to get up early in the morning, get up half an hour earlier, just do more. Yeah. Or organize yourself in the yeah. evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you understand that, that and but this is what I'm saying, is that the basic of head to body, uh, body to mind connection. But then understand yeah. your environment. So me in South Australia of um, the bottom of Australia. I um, I was born in New South Wales, so eastern side of Australia, and then we were forced to move. Horrific childhood stories. Like I'm one of those kids that had all the trauma, and so we were forced to move to South Australia. And suddenly, I'm being driven across the hay plain where it's like flat. Everything's dead. Everything's grey or red, and it looks disgusting. And I, I I go to South Australia, and there's these. I'm like, where are the trees? They're like, there's trees everywhere. I'm like, no, this is, this, this is like, this is scrub bush. There's no trees here. Like, what's going on? Like, the, you guys aren't even human. You're aliens. It's terrible here. And I spent my teen years being depressed and feeling so discombobulated because I couldn't understand why I was just so off. And then in yeah. 2009, I moved myself to Queensland to the tropics to probably too hot. And then I moved down to Brisbane where it's a beautiful temperament and went, I feel so abundant, so happy, so connected. So where I live now is like just above the New South Wales Queensland border. And in this rainbow here, I know I can travel anywhere in this area 
And my biology, my mind, my soul, my spirit is so turned on all day because I'm in the most beautiful environment that connects to my biology. So in saying that, there's so much depth to head heart, uh, head to body yeah. connection because there's so many elements that none of us are paying attention to because we eat, train, work, sleep, repeat. Yeah, that, that's the biggest problem of our society for many years, at least after the Second World War, it started from every decade more and more. That's like, like an animal, just, you know, like you said, eat, train, sleep, if they train. Most people in the society are definitely unhealthy and don't work out at all and everything. So, and then you get sluggish, lazy, not just body, but also mind. And then you don't think about that because here in Germany, we have a saying that perfectly fits to Germany in general, but now with the situation in the world, what's going on even more, There's a saying, um, if they have their bullshit TV soaps and if they can, you know, eat like, like an animal, like eat whatever they want and be fat, and lazy on the couch, they will not go on the street and don't care and don't question what's going on in the world. I think oh. that's the case with many people and that's why they don't care about body and mind connection. And uh, although it's, it's very important and it's also very weird to some people They say always, but live your life and, you know, they, they want to have sex as much as possible and do all these, these crazy things, but don't think about, you know, um, body and mind connection. And it's, it seems like also there's a trend going on, on at least on Instagram or more and more people. I don't know if they just um, started it or if it's a real thing that's uh, being sex positive or the sex positivity. What do you think about that? Um, what did you hear about that often <clears throat> being in touch with your sexual energy is empowerment being in touch with your sexual yeah. um your divine sexual requirements like there has been so much sexual shaming and actually my partner and i just finished doing a weekend with a beautiful soul ej love she ran a, a couple yeah, of yeah and so and everyone was like why have you guys gone to that like you guys have like a fresh new amazing relationship and that's what we said The moment you think you don't need to work on intimacy and connection is the moment you've lost it because yeah. it's, it's the same as brushing your teeth. You don't brush your teeth once and like, I don't know, my life is completely there. No, it's something you have to do constantly because wear and tear happens, food happens, drink happens, all the things happen. So if you're not constantly working on your intimacy with yourself, your connection, your language, how do you expect a partner to? True. And then if you're not communicating together, like my partner and I are very open. We have a, a very beautiful, robust relationship, um, sexually, mentally, physically, everything. And many find it triggering because we are that way. How could you be that way and still be in an intimate relationship? It's like the constructs that society dictates to us to be normal is yeah. suppression, is, um, is conformity is communism. How dare you be an invigorated soul? How dare you be in touch with your sexual power and your energy? Mm -hmm. When you are in that space, you are your own sovereign being. You are connected to your truth. You are connected to your desires, your wants. And when you're connected to your desires, your wants and your needs, you have the willingness to push, to question, to ask, to do more, to be more, and to see more in the world of the truth and the bullshit that's going on constantly in society. Mm -hmm. When you're in that space, you're a problem for dictatorship. You're a problem for the people that are here to suppress and hold us yeah, back. Exactly. You just might question the status quo. And that, they then put fear into everything. They then make it wrong. They make it judged. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening in the world. Yeah. 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 You want to go out there and, and be like we went to the, the strip on the weekend. And we, we, we had this beautiful night out. And for me, I can walk into a strip club and go, Look at these girls in their power, in their essence. Some of them are off balance, yes, because they're doing it for the wrong reasons. But there are some women out there who understand the truth about their sexual connection, who understand the power in standing strong in their, their feminine or their dark feminine and be there for the masculine, providing a service of that energy exchange. None of them are wrong. Prostitutes are not wrong. If we didn't have prostitutes, we would have more rape. Yeah. That's definitely true, yeah. If we didn't have, um, there's so much more in society that we could be doing to support our feminine and our masculine. I'm going to go down a wormhole here with you in the sexual side of things. 
I was someone who was sexually tampered with three separate times in my childhood by three separate humans. And I spent many years of my life so angry. I had a mother who hated my father, a father who chose to go off and be a musician, so I never saw him much. Um, mm -hmm. Enough, but not much. So absent father, alcoholic mother, all those things. The perfect shitstorm for a human. Mm -hmm. But I spent a lot of my life being anger, and it wasn't until I really started to look at these things and realise that I was so angry and disconnected from myself, I was projecting onto every male and disconnecting and disempowering. Yeah. It got to a point where I was reading this wonderful book uh, by Brene Brown, uh, Braving the Wilderness, I think it is, and she spoke about everyone is doing the best they can with what they know. And so when I can come from a space of going, wow, in sexual times, with these predators that were, were, my, um, were, my, were my predators, I'll just leave it at that, they were doing the best they could. I don't know if they weren't emasculated by their mother, their sister, their partner. I don't know if they were sexually abused. I don't know what their past traumas, beliefs and situations were. And when they met me as a young girl, vibrant, energetic, loving life, thinking humans are amazing, which I still do, when they met me, they were like, look at this thing, and oh, my gosh, I don't know how, how whoa, I have feelings, I have emotions, and no one's taught me emotional connection and intelligence to myself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have no fucking idea what to do with this beautiful human. So, yes, they overstood boundaries. No, it does not make it right what they did, but it does not fucking serve me to sit here as a victim. It doesn't serve me to sit here the last 10 years of my life and be a victim. No. If I can sit there and say, wow, I can forgive, not forget, you for doing the best you could with what you knew and I can stand in my power and not play a victim in this role. I can move forward in my life and do fucking amazing things for men and women and not hate, not disrespect and not carry the trauma and traumatise other people because of what happened to me. Each and every one of them were doing the best they could with what they knew and that set me free to remember that I'm doing the best with what I know. So what am I choosing? How am I choosing to show up in this life? What am I choosing to show up as and be? I spent my whole life in some pretty questionable relationships, and now I've met my fucking equal. He is my absolute perfect human. He is me. We are so the same. We mm -hmm. talk about the hard things. Last night we stayed awake till stupid hours of night talking about X situations. Now some would say that's bad. But we got to talk about our boundaries. We got to talk about our traumas. We got to talk about... When I hear you say that, I feel, because how I feel is my choice, but I'm going to speak to you about how I'm feeling as a reaction to what I've heard from you. And in that space, I'm going to just, I have no attachment. You don't need to fix it. I'm just going to express how I'm feeling. And once I've done that, can you tell me how that makes you feel so I understand where you're at? Own your feelings, own your thoughts, own your behaviours, and own your space, own your traumas, own everything. Because if you're not owning, you're projecting, and then you're unhealthy, you're unbalanced, and you're not in your head, body, connection. True, your yeah. life is your choice, and where you are right now, and what you're looking at in the mirror, and what you're dealing with every day is your choice. You created it. Yeah. So many of my clients get so triggered when I say to them, how is your illness? How is your, your shitty relationship? How is your shitty job working out for you? How have you chosen that? And most of them will go, it's, I haven't chosen this. <laughs> I haven't chosen this. I mean, don't stop disempowering yourself. Stop disempowering yeah. yourself. Stop giving in your own sovereign rights to choose this, to create this. And when you can look at it, I feel my life was horrible in many ways, but incredible. And now I can look here and go, why did I choose that? Oh, because it forced me to be resourceful, because it forced me to be open, because it forced me to ask better questions, because it forced me to question things. Yeah, and it no, that's very important. Ask, it forced me to up-level my expectation of me and how I choose to be relating and intimately relating. Mm -hmm. From there is empowerment. Anything below that, you are kidding yourself and playing a victim and buying into society's depression, control, dictation. My biggest thing for everyone is ask better questions. Be willing to ask. Yeah, that, that is so true. And that, but that's honestly, and I know people will say you're a conspiracy theory guy or whatever, or like they, they hate you for that when you're straight on, but I, I don't care. It's just how it is. But people just are afraid and too blunt, uh, or maybe sometimes also too, too stupid theory to look into. 
Yeah, but it's important. Yeah. You have to ask questions. And that's mm. why it fits to the thing what I said in the beginning, and especially to countries like Germany. It's like when, but I think it's in America pretty similar probably. When, when you have food and you can watch whatever you want in TV, then people are happy. Most people don't question. That's the reason why they want to keep, you know, gyms closed and want to uh, you know, put the healthy people down because usually, not always, but the healthy people are the ones who question a lot because when you are healthy and want to be healthy, you have to research, you have to look in details, mind and body, and that's why the question, is that okay what they do? And they always want to keep people low profile, nobody asks and just stay, be stupid and and all that and that's why i think it's awesome that that you also like this and, and question things and try to improve and work on yourself and speaking also about the clients what is your service and how can you help people how do you help people when they want to contact you well wow. i'll publicly announce i've quit shipping i used to be a caterer and i'm now no longer doing that um what i do do and what i'm currently building out I work with people to understand your truth, to face yourself. Yeah. I work with people who are willing to stop playing victim and are ready to face their choices and yeah. ready to understand the truth of their biological journey here on earth. I am so done watching so many of you spiritually bypass your biology. Many, I have beautiful connections in the world with beautiful spiritual groups and I love you all so much. You are such beautiful souls. But if you are in this physical body and you haven't fully stepped into understanding your biological truth, you are a soul, a being, I don't know if you're religious or whatever, but you are a thing that chose to come to earth and have a physical experience. So if you're one of those people who is spiritually bypassing and doing all the spiritual things and not fully honouring this biological being that you were given in all of its greatness and capacity, if you are out there in the world in the fitness industry and you are following someone else, and you are, you are loving and just wanting to be in their body, their life, yeah. their circumstance yeah. more. Health and then health is one part. That's what people often misunderstand. Being healthy and following, you can follow bodybuilding, auto and whatever sport. That is one part, and it's important. Not say, It's definitely for people who say, okay, it's not good uh, to work out and all that, and you can just be lazy. That's stupid. It's very important. But the thing is, yeah. when you get stuck into that uh, narrow, close mind like this, then it's a problem because being healthy is absolutely crucial. And in my opinion, you have to work out and take care of your body and whatever type of workout you do, or whatever yeah. you want to do. But also yeah. here, the mind that's important. That's why with the body mind connection, only anybody who understands the true self, the true religion or philosophy, whatever they follow, then they know it's both, it goes hand in hand and mm. very few people get to that point. Yeah, and like it depends. Really <clears throat> it depends. I mean, because, yes, being lazy, and I'm going to speak to the lazy aspect, there is one of the six human body types who biologically will always be a heavier body. And yeah. guess what? If we didn't have those heavier bodies, the world would die. Because do you know what comes from that beautiful, voluptuous, healthy human that you many would call lazy or less motivated? They are the nurturers. They are the carers. They are the ones who are going to think of everyone and everything before themselves. And yeah. I ask you, if you have someone in your life who is not motivated, who is rather overweight, don't mm -hmm. criticise them. Ask them where they don't feel safe. Who, yeah. You out there who might be watching this may resonate with this. You're not lazy by choice. You're not choosing not to do the thing. You are not safe. And someone in your, either you or someone in your community isn't safe. And those bigger bodies will take on everything for everyone else before themselves. These are the people yeah. who will give from an empty cup and keep giving to death. That's why they need then help. So that's why it's important to look out for the people around you and say that always uh, really Never criticize. Yeah, never criticize because we never know what's truly going on for that person. Just remember, everyone is doing the best with what they know. So I also have to say on the flip side, but some people they are definitely lazy. So that what you say is definitely true. But I think you uh, people cannot always have genetic or um, whatever circumstance as an excuses. A lot of people are like that, and and 
So that's why I think it's, it's important to look at this. Yeah, everything's circumstantial. So, yes, some have fallen so far off the slope. They are the ones that sit there and play the games in society. These are the ones that, you know, have sit there in front of the game all day. These are the ones that come home from work and they disconnect and they fall into a world that yeah. is not real. And and they, they, they escape. It's escapism. But my question is, what are you escaping? Yeah, because, that's why entertainment and, industry is so big because so many people, that's what is the most money because people always want to escape, whether they want to watch a football game, they want to watch a movie or whatever or because they want to escape. Yeah, they want to escape all of their reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they really do. And so my, my only thing for most people is, is what are you escaping? What is the truth? Let's come back into connection of what you actually really want. But remember, it's not a race. You don't have to get off the couch and run five days a week and go to the gym 10 days a week. You're not going to go from no to woe. It's a process. And it, True. it's just a lot of my clients have been going, but I can't change everything tomorrow. I don't expect you to. You are whatever age you are right now, and you are in whatever physical capacity you are right now, and it took you that long to get there. If you think that a six-week boot camp, an eight-week boot camp, a three-month boot camp is going to make your life change completely, you are kidding yourself. This is a choice to spend the rest of your life making better choices day in, day out. So if you're kidding yourself and thinking you're going to find a magic pill, a magic boot camp, a magic trainer that's going to fix you before Christmas, you have that's already set yourself up for failure. It's true. Yeah, it's definitely bullshit. And it's so a choice. Why... It's a choice to make yeah. your life. And sometimes you're going to make the wrong choice. Never judge yourself for a wrong choice. Look at why you did it, what it provided, and then choose what you will choose better next time. And don't, don't your choice, your mental choice, to castrate yourself for your choices is what's going to cause more wrong choices. So have compassion for yourself. Why yeah. did you choose the bad thing again? What is it providing for you? Get in touch with the truth of that and stop finding magic pills because you are only going to sabotage yourself. Well, that's, that's so true. It's very, it's very important, a very important message. I think a lot of people should uh, remember that uh, from time to time again. And yes, anything else you want to say, maybe some last words, something you want to promote or some last advice, maybe? If you want to, no, I don't, I don't promote, I don't sell. If you want to work well, for me, you, you can definitely you promote yourself, whatever you yeah, want, you can yeah. say. If you, want, you want. if you want to work with me, I know you do. You know you do. And you will reach out to me. And I trust in absolute divine guidance. I don't sell anymore. I don't, oh, people do their selling things and I, I even get turned off now. Selling is done. If you think that I'm your human, you'll reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram. Like I said, I'm Shana X Lee or Shana only on all social media. You will find this hair everywhere. So that's um, and this height. So if you want to work with me, you want to connect, and you're curious about any part of the conversation had here, um, reach out. Start a conversation. Yeah. I'm not going to sell to you because I don't want to work with someone who's not actually fully committed to making the changes. Yeah. I'm not well, going to be your band aid and I'm not going to be your scapegoat. I'm going to be the person that's standing beside you going, I am walking this with you. Yeah. No, that's, that's very important, you know, to really have the commitment. If you want something, then you do it. And for everybody who wants to reach out, definitely feel free to do it. And yeah, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. I hope we can definitely do it again because I feel like we could probably talk for hours and hours. <laughs> 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 thank you so much and uh, when yeah, I come fine. to Germany uh, when everything opens up again I've spent a lot of time in Germany I've had hundreds oh, of relatives awesome. in Germany oh, that's, that's great so you, then we definitely have to meet them. <laughs> yeah, then have a great day everybody until next time bye